Hey everybody, Ryan here coming at you with a movie night video. Hopefully I'll be able to finish this film. A film I'm going to be watching tonight for the first time. I've seen bits and pieces. I've probably seen... Um, actually, I haven't seen this version before. I've seen the film, um, but I have never seen this version. And the film I'm talking about is the director's cut version of Woodstock. Three days of peace in music. And this is the 40th anniversary revisited edition. It is the director's cut. And I've always wanted to see this in its director's cut form. And really in its full form because I was I was a lot younger when I first saw it. I um to give you a little background, I have always loved music. Woodstock has always been one of my favorite eras in music in general. Like, you know, I love all that classic rock music. Uh, I went through a period of time where I guess I actually knew a couple people that said I was a hippie because of some of the stuff I listened to. I listened, um, of course, I played bass for a long time, and so I loved playing bass to a lot of the stuff, everything from, you know, Jimi Hendrix, Grand Funk Railroad, all that good stuff. And Woodstock has always been one of my most favorite moments in history to look to learn about because you have a nation that's in kind of, that's just completely divided. And all these people come together for this music festival. And I don't think they knew at the time how big it was actually going to be. And it's, you know, the festival that we always talk about this, that, you know, peace, love, and music. And, you know, over time they've tried to repeat that success. Uh, they've done it a few times with not as much fanfare. But I think the most controversial one of as of late is, I'm pretty sure it was 1999. I think that's when it was when they had Woodstock and there was fires. Uh, people were, you know, women were being raped and beaten and all. I mean, it was crazy. And all you got to do is go on YouTube and look at some of that footage. I think it was Woodstock 99. And so, yeah, as a little bit of background, I've always been into that era I have a Woodstock Live album that I've, or a CD that I've had for probably about 15 years that I have routinely will put in at least once a month into my, um, you know, CD player. I've ripped it onto, you know, um, to where I could like, you know, str like legit listen to it digitally, of course. And um, I have Woodstock books. I have a Woodstock shirt. I can't, I, it's still a medium. It was when I was in high school, so... But I still have it hung up next to like I have like a Metallica shirt from when I went to see their their show back in '03, and I have that hanging in my closet as well. Um, but I have always loved that whole premise and all everything to do with Woodstock. In my old bedroom, I used to have a Woodstock poster. So that's just kind of giving you a little context of the event itself and how I've always loved everything about it watching videos on it. And so this film came out in 1969, of course. Um, this is the director's cut. It runs 224 minutes and it's directed by Michael Wadley. And, you know, has basically it's about, I'll leave a link down below the trailer, but basically it's um, a documentary covering the entire event. Sometimes some of the it's like split screen in some shots, and it's like some of the stuff that's going on at the same time. And it is one of the best edited pieces of film ever from what I've seen in the previous edition that I saw. I actually think the version I saw before wasn't even the full theatrical cut. I think it was a heavily cut edition. And um, the cool thing is, is that this film, which a lot of people probably don't realize, this film had... A um, a, I think like five or six editors and two of the editors was Martin Scorsese and Thelma Schoonmaker, who is his, um, you know, editor on most of his, on Martin Scorsese's films. And I didn't know that when I first saw the edition I saw, but after I learned that I was like, Oh my gosh, it makes perfect sense because the editing is flawless and how it goes from, um, scene to scene and how it's, when it does a split screen and it has different things in the actual frame, different things that's happening at different parts of the event, especially with some of the live music and stuff, 
it is brilliantly edited and some of the um i'll have more to say about it when i watch it i'm gonna be starting it and uh, my wife's out then she'll come home i'm gonna pause it for a little while and then later after she goes to bed i'm gonna finish it so yeah movie night tonight woodstock the director's cut really looking forward to actually checking out this cut i swear i think the cut i saw before was a, on tv some station it was a crappy quality it was edited um i forgot what station it was it wasn't like a pbs it was like a something i don't even think the, the station exists anymore i'm pretty sure it was like a two hour cut um and it may only have been one like one half of it maybe i didn't even see the whole thing I'll tell you when I'm done, but either way, I have never seen this director's cut. So, yes, let's go ahead and start it. Basically, this is a three-disc set with over nine hours of the movie, music, and extras. And the synopsis is, for three days in the rural town of Bethel, New York, half a million people experience the defining moment of their generation, a concert unprecedented in scope and influence, a coming together of people with a single common goal, peace and music, they called it Woodstock. So let's do this. talking about how the split screen is. Wow. Um, it's almost 2 a.m. I took a little bit of a break halfway through. Um, there's actually a very, very funny... Um, the intermission of the film is this. I took a screenshot of it. Is this. It's, it, it made me laugh. I chuckled a lot. But, um, boy, it was like I saw this for the first time. Um, part of me even thinks maybe what I was watching before, um, what I saw a while back, wasn't even this. It was something else. But I have seen this on um, HBO or one of those channels recently. I watched an hour of it. So I, that's how I knew about the camera angles and like the way that it was edited and all that kind of stuff. But um, talk about an experience. I am... Oh, man, I'm literally... This is something I'm going to watch a lot. Whether it's on in the background when I'm cleaning the house. Whether I'm taking a nap and I just want to listen to something while I'm taking a nap. This is powerful. Um... This is a movie night. I'm going to talk. I miss doing these kind of rambling kind of videos, so I'm going to do one. Um, I've already talked a little bit, but basically halfway through the film, my wife came home. I knew she was coming home, and we did some stuff, and 
I was trying to tell her how the movie made me feel, how it, the experience made me feel. After coming home from a long day's work, being off the next couple days, I really wanted to decompress. So I chose to watch this film. It came in the mail today because I just recently ordered it off of Amazon. No, off of eBay for like, I think like $6, something like that, with shipping. Brand new from a seller. And I figured what better way to decompress than by starting a huge documentary about Woodstock. The ultimate peace, love, and music. And let me tell you, by the first hour... Um, I don't know. It hit me. Maybe it's because I love the music, but when, um, you know, when Richie Havens was on, you know, I, and, you know, he pretty much opens up. He's known as, like, being one of the, the opener for Woodstock. I got chills, and those chills never went away. And um, there was a few times that I actually found myself getting emotional by the power of the music. One was when, was when Joan Baez was singing, um, you know, her whole set. It was so powerful. And, you know, I've always been a fan of her. You know, I'm not something I put in, you know, this, the, the, this, you know, the stereo, or put it, I'm putting the stereo, put in my CD player all the time. I don't really have any of her stuff other than on like these Woodstock, um, compilations that I have, but I do know how influential she is and how big she is in um, what she's done with the music industry. But her voice blew me away. And I've heard her before, but for some reason, this time, it really hit me. Um, also, when, um, um, of course, you know, Joe Cocker has always had a you know, I was thinking about him recently, you know, like when he passed away. He passed away fairly recently. And I was thinking his voice was so powerful. It was, so, it was, he had this like gritty, deep voice. But he, when he belted out his stuff, you could feel the power and the soul in his voice, in his heart, everything. And I just thought, you know, his whole thing was amazing, and it, th that hit me as well. And um, of course, anything with Crosby, Stills, and Nash, I automatically am glued to whatever they're doing. But um, really, and as well as watching the people, the people that went to Woodstock. Some of the people in the town completely wrote them off as freaks. And what they were experiencing was something not only that generation, you know, can relate to. You know, they were rebelling against authority for what they thought was right. Um, they were tired of dealing with the government, Vietnam. It's not that they were anarchist. You know, I'm sure some people were. But they were so just all about love and peace to where all the war and all that stuff didn't mean anything to them. They were going to live a peaceful life, free. Um, you could debate, you know, whether all the sex and the drugs and all that kind of stuff, like, kind of, you know, it was, you know, it kind of canceled all the peace stuff out. But at the root of it all, you have a generation that felt um, like they weren't understood. They weren't accepted for how they were. And with everything going on in the politics of the time, it really shows you what they were actually feeling. Some people... Um, you could see that maybe some of them were not accepted by their parents, but then there were some that were, and they just were just wanting to be their own thing. 
I'm rambling, I know, but this I, there's so much going through my head. And you see, like, there was a scene in the film where the filmmakers were in the set, in the city, and some of the townspeople were together talking about how they were giving out food and they were going there because it became a disaster area because there were so many people, there was a storm, all this stuff. There was not enough food and water because it was just so many people. And the townspeople, one main guy is being interviewed. He's like, yeah, I mean, I understand. Yes, they're doing some you know questionable things, but they're not hurting anybody. They're nice people. They're nice kids. And they... Don't have any food and water. What am I going to do? Let them starve? And then another guy walks by and he's like, they're out there smoking pot, blah, 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 blah. They're just a bunch of potheads. And the guy's like, the, the main guy was like, they're not hurting anybody. They're not hurting anybody at all. And um, they got in a debate about Vietnam. Two grown men were, you know, they were older, probably middle-aged men. One was almost bald. The other one was probably they're in their 50s. And he, um, the main guy was like, what's the difference between, I mean, you know, he was basically talking about how this people are justifying Vietnam, but they're telling everybody that these people pro not even really protesting, but just enjoying peace, love and music that there's, they're the freaks. They're the bad ones, even though there's a war going on. And there's people in the government that are, like, letting all these people die. But the media wants to point to the people attending Woodstock as the freaks and the bad people. And it just really makes you think. And I think that this, watching this, you would think that this was made today in terms of what the, this generation feels um, about, a, about the government, about what's going on. Are they being listened to? This is so relevant to today, Woodstock, the event. And obviously, we're not going to be able to repeat Woodstock. We're not going to be able to make a time machine and go back. But I suggest you guys to pick this up, even if you're not even into the music. It's cheap. You could get this three-disc edition in the Walmart Blu-ray bin for like seven eighty-eight or whatever it is. I got this on Amazon or on eBay for cheap. I know some of you that are watching this probably own it, just haven't watched it yet because of the running time. You guys are trying to find time. I promise you, the second you start it, you're not going to be able to turn it off. Like, I, um, you know, I turned it off at the intermission because I was doing some stuff here to get ready for what's starting tomorrow. But then I put it back in and I was like, oh my gosh, this is just, it's brilliant. Um... And of course, you have Jimi Hendrix with his amazing Star Spangled Banner. Um, it's funny, you know, everybody praises it nowadays for being such a like a amazing version of it. But if you think about it, it's actually his form of protest against what America was doing. I mean, it was it starts out as the Star Spangled Banner, but then it goes into a he improvises and goes into his own interpretation of it and. Some, it's beautiful, but some of it sounds ugly because he's trying to show that, yes, America is beautiful, but at that time, there's still, and even to today, there's still an ugly side to every, I mean, it's like that with every society. And that's kind of what he shows. So, um, I'm trying to, this is just, I'm not, up, I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to put it up as like a, you know. I like doing these kind of videos where I'm just chatting. I don't want, you know, I don't want to edit this to make it seem like some staged conversation. Yes, I'm reviewing this, but it's really my thoughts, my experience watching it. Um, yeah, it was, it's funny because one of the, you know, I've told you I've had a CD and a few different CDs, but one main CD in particular about Woodstock, and it was when Country Joe McDonald and, um, you know, Country Joe and the Fish were on. And he was like, you know, uh, there's that Vietnam. Next stop is Vietnam. And he's like, you know, who are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. The next stop is Vietnam. You know, that, um, I guess that jig that he does. 
I used to have that memorized and it was so, it sounds funny, but it's so ironic at the same time. And it's, uh, it's just everything about it, everything about this, you need to pick it up. I can't wait to check out all these um, special features. In fact, if you guys have the, if you guys are watching this, I'm giving away this digital copy. So the first person who wants it gets it. There it is right there. You got it? So check it out whenever you get a second. Or whenever you get a, a second. Whenever you get a chance. So there's two more discs to this. Um, never before released legendary performances. So it has more of the performances. Um, over three hours of additional music and stories from the festival. Woodstock from festival to feature. Woodstock untold stories over two hours of performances not seen in the film. And then the Museum of Bethel Woods, the story of the 60s in Woodstock. So this is loaded with stuff. And it's loaded so much so that it has um, two discs of special features. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this movie night. It was kind of impromptu. I didn't really know my wife was going to be gone tonight until a couple days ago. So I wanted to do this. I was originally going to watch something else. But I really needed to watch this. I, As soon as it came in, I was like, I'm watching it tonight. So, alright, it's almost 2 o'clock. i got a long couple days ahead of me. You guys will see that in my daily vlogs. So, thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to my daily vlog channel, please do. Show me some support. Um, if you guys enjoy my content, I put out daily content. Sometimes it's like full-on daily vlogs where it covers the entire day and it's like 20-minute videos. But as of late, because of my busy work schedule, some videos are maybe 20 seconds to a minute. Most of them, right now, they average between 2 and 3 minutes and sometimes even less. But there's still content I'm putting out every day. So be sure to keep up with me on that channel. And be sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Have you seen this film? So, um, all that stuff. I'm starting to lose my voice. It is 2 o'clock in the morning now. So I'm going to go ahead and go to sleep. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow. Dang it. I just ended that like how I do my daily vlogs. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.